is up YouTube? Welcome to another episode of CJ's Cosplays. Today we're going to take a look at my brand new Gambit cosplay which I debuted at New York Comic Con 2018. First off, I want to say thank you so much for all of your feedback. I've gotten some great feedback on my Captain America suit review and uh, as well as some of my other videos and I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart thank you guys. Uh, it's been a long time coming me starting these videos. I've been talking about doing it for years and I'm really really excited to keep bringing content that I can share with you guys. So for those of you that may not know I debuted with one of my best friends Megara Hope cosplay our 90s battle damaged Gambit and Rogue at New York Comic Con 2018. This was a year in the making for these cosplays, which I am super proud of. Her Rogue is, without a doubt, the best Rogue I think I've ever seen. Um, I've gotten a lot of great feedback on my Gambit, and really uh, what this video about is about today is I just want to share with you guys uh, what I did for my Gambit cosplay. Now, originally I had planned on doing a full tutorial on how to do all of these um, pieces of my Gambit cosplay, but as you guys know, life gets in the way, sometimes money gets in the way, and when doing a cosplay like this, it really, really takes a lot of time, and I had to space things out over a period of a few months. So, what we're going to do today is we're just going to look at the pieces that I put together for my interpretation of Gambit, and just wanted to share with you guys uh, what I did along the way. So, to start off, as you uh, nerds out there know, Gambit has some really interesting gloves. They're kind of like an archery glove or uh, almost like a pool glove. Uh, they are fingerless gloves except for the middle and ring finger which are fully covered. Now I've seen a lot of people do like a hemmed version of a spandex glove and I thought that that was you know pr pretty cool but I wanted our gambit to look very tactical. It's something that I really think looks great in a cosplay and wanted to kind of do a meshing up of the 90s cartoon as well as the uh, what, what I think Gambit should look like in more of a real-world setting. So, I went with a tactical glove, and underneath that, I actually purchased a small nylon glove, which I'll put on right now, show you guys how that goes on. Now, I bought these gloves off Amazon, you can get them at your local party store, it's just a regular nylon glove with the fingers cut out that I needed, and yes, it's frayed and it looks like crap right now, but we're actually going to cover that with our tactical glove. Now, you can go with any tactical glove you want if you want to do this look. I just thought that it looked pretty cool, as you can see right there. Um, Velcro that bad boy up, and it just gives a kind of really cool real-world look to what I think Gambit's glove should look like. So, now the next piece that we're going to look at is actually Gambit's face mask. Now. What I had originally wanted for Gambit's mask was I wanted a full leather piece, but unfortunately time got away from me and I really had to just do the best that I could with what I could get my hands on. So I purchased a neoprene face mask off Amazon, which you can see a picture of right here. Uh, it cost me around, I think, $8. I'll put the correct number right here with it um, for how much it costs. And I had cut the face out. I can show you pictures also of how it looked along the way. but. I wanted a full neck coverage, so I went to my local Joann's Fabrics and I bought some stretchy uh, faux leather vinyl um, and I took some contact cement and I completely covered over it and cut out ear holes for it. Now I do not have a sewing machine at this current moment in time, um, so I didn't get to fully hem up the center of it or really finish the back, so it kind of flopped around a little bit in the back. This is something that I eventually want to do a full leather piece on, or was even looking at maybe getting a silicon headpiece. If you guys know of anyone that could point me in the direction of a really nice silicon um, gambit cowl, I would really, really appreciate it. But for right now, let's just throw this thing up. It just goes on like this, and then Velcro's in the back. Um, the biggest issue that I had with this headpiece actually was I got the worst tension headache about uh, six hours into the convention. Got to get the ear holes out. It's a bit of time. So there you can see the Gambit mask. I'm looking at how it looks. Make sure that everything's right. Um, so there was the Gambit mask. 
Uh, this tucks right under the chest piece, which we'll get to in a little bit. But yeah, you know, I just wanted, you know, uh, very much the comic book look. Got to make sure that, you know, the hair is, you know, kind of flowing in the wind there, shall you? Um, but it's a horrible occasion accent. Um, so I went with something like this. Again, this doesn't breathe now that it has the faux leather on top of it. So I'd really like to upgrade to something that is real leather or something silicon based. I'm getting text messages right now. Ignore that. Um, but yeah, this is what I went with. It was very fast, very cheap, very easy to do, and I think it actually gives a, a pretty good look. And doing the makeup and everything really helps set off the character. So, now I'm going to take this off. God, I love doing that. And we're going to look at everyone's favorite part of this cosplay, my boots. Now, in the comic books and in the 90s cartoon, Gambit has these very, very tall metal boots, which you can see right here. They have a like knee pad on top of it that's circular, and I, I, I love these boots, but I did not have the money to purchase these boots at this moment. I just didn't have the extra, you know, couple hundred dollars. I could have made them out of foam, but I'm really just learning how to work with foam in. Uh, I actually decided that I would go with a pair of regular black umpire shin guards. Now, here they are right here, fully painted. Uh, I do have to go in and fix them up because as you can see, I've got some paint chipping off of them from, you know, just some wear and tear at the convention. Nothing, you know, really bad. But it just gave me the right look that I wanted for Gambit. And I'll put these on in a minute to show you guys how it is. I'll do a full suit up at the end of this video and uh, just really show you, you know, how everything looks. Now, I had gone in in a flat black and then I went in and dry brushed on some silver and did some dry brushing of some copper and I put a little bullet hole in here by using the rotary tool. Um, I went in with some copper to, you know, make it look a little more rusty and, you know, he's been sweating into it. You know, it, it's battle worn, it's damaged, it's gritty and it's just really the look that I was going for. So, with these boots, now again, these were just a regular pair of Air Jordans that I had from a few years ago. Uh, they're actually two sizes too big for me now, um, but it didn't matter, I wore thick socks. Um, and they were actually pretty comfortable to wear uh, walking around the convention. So the paint that I used again, I sprayed it in a flat black, um, and then I went in with the same paint detailing that I did on this. Now the difference with this is spray paint is not made for sneakers. So as you can see, there's a lot of chipping and wear and tear, but really it doesn't matter. I, it looks battle damaged, I put some blood on the toe there, and I can just go in and spruce that up a little bit with, um, you know, just some more dry brushing. Now with these sneakers, I wanted to make sure that the laces were covered. So I had a foam, I quickly made a little boot cover. Uh, again, I just put some flat black on it and went in and dry brushed some of the silver and then a little bit of red and the copper color to make it look aged. I just attached it crudely with some elastic and painted that. But when you have these on, you just slide it on top trying to do it so you guys can see it, but that's not really working. So, when you're ready, you just slide it on top and it covers up all of the laces. Um, you can see the elastic on the sides, but the front view of these are really great. My one issue with using the shin guards is the back of my legs were completely exposed and you could just see the elastic and my pants kind of spilling out. Um, that's something that I can fix. I really want to rivet the um, umpire shin guards to a tall uh, leather boot cover that I can then, uh, you know, paint entirely and just leave on and then, you know, really easy to take on and off. Don't have to worry about the elastic, don't have to worry about it going anywhere. But now, we're gonna take a look at my pants for the Gambit cosplay. So, pretty much every Gambit costume that I've seen, Gambit is wearing his brown trench coat, whether it's leather or suede, he's got on his armor piece, and then he normally has spandex pants on like he does in the comics, which have the lining of the pink triangles down the sides. Now there are some amazing Gambit cosplayers out there, and they all have pretty much done this. I wanted to do something different, like I said before. So I went with a pair of plain black tactical pants and went in with some uh, flat black spray paint, some brown acrylic paints, and even some aqua spray paint to, you know, just do like a little bit of a 90s splatter on it uh, and look, have kind of like similar coloring to how his pants are shaded in the comics. And I came out with this. 
So as you can see, there is a subtle hint of the blue to it. Now I did go in with the same paint that I used for my Gambit torso piece on the pockets, uh, just to give it kind of the look of how his pants looked with the pink going up and down the sides, just to, you know, be subtly reminiscent to the 90s comic. Since that is really the look that I was going for, um, these looked absolutely fantastic with the costume. They kind of give off almost a leather feel. Uh, I, something that I've learned uh, recently is if you spray any kind of spray paint, especially a gloss on top of this, you know, nylon material, it gives off almost a leathery look. And that's really good to know because it's so light. You know, if you sweat, you, it, it doesn't really make a difference. You don't feel bound in this and it just was really comfortable. These are the most comfortable pants I think I've ever worn at a convention. I'll put the link for all of these items that I purchased down in the description, so if you want to do a gambit similar to this, then you can feel free to. Now, we're going to take a look at the coat that I got for this gambit cosplay. Now, again, traditionally with every gambit cosplay I've seen, it almost seems like it's the same jacket purchased overseas, and it, you know it's got a great look. It's made of either a faux leather or a um, you know uh, faux suede, and you know it's got you know the uh, things on the shoulder. Tell me what they are. It has the buckles on the sleeves, and I wanted to go for something that I thought was a little more gritty and something that had a real kind of leathery feel to it. So I purchased a. Nightmare Batman replica jacket actually. Now, let me start off by saying this replica jacket is in no way, shape, or form actually a Nightmare Batman replica jacket. It is missing all of the detailing right up in here. It doesn't have the buttons on the back. It, it, it really doesn't have much other than a similar shape and collar to the jacket used in Batman vs Superman. So if you're gonna do a Batman vs Superman cosplay, I would actually recommend not using this jacket. Now, I love this jacket. The only issue that I ran in with this is that because it's faux leather, again, like I said before, it doesn't breathe. Nothing breathes like real leather does. It can be heavy, but still, it breathes and it has that flow. But the biggest issue that I had was because this is plastic and I wore the collar popped up because Gambit is a badass and if you don't pop your collar, then you're not Gambit. Um, I wound up getting a rash actually on the back of my neck from the plastic from the jacket rubbing up on my neck. Um, not really a big issue, but I mean it is when you're walking around sweating and everything. Um, I went in with a lot of sandpaper. I did a lot of work on this jacket to kind of loosen it up. It was very, very stiff. I did a lot of rough sanding on it, put in a little bullet hole there. You know, really, really wanted to make this look as messed up as I possibly could. Also, one thing I wanted to share with you guys was for the cards, I didn't do the um, light-up cards. That's something that I'll eventually do later. It really wasn't something that I was too worried about doing uh, for this costume. Um, I did, however, go with these bicycle pink playing cards, which I believe are for breast cancer, and they look so freaking cool. I, I used these everywhere I went. I'm definitely gonna pick up a bunch of a bunch more of these ones. Um, actually, while I was at the convention, uh, my friend Meg and I ran into Chris Claremont, and he signed one of my cards. He created Gambit and Rogue, and he asked for a picture with us, which was without a doubt the coolest thing that has ever happened to me at any convention. And he told me that he loved my Gambit. The creator of Gambit said that he loved my Gambit. I can't stress how freaking cool that is. Um, so, aside from that, I'm done geeking out now. Well, not really, that's what this whole channel is about. But anyway, um, these are a great pickup. Uh, I had to overnight these, cost me $14 for the box with shipping. Uh, it's expensive for cards, but they look great. And I can know I can find them cheaper, I just waited to the last minute on these. Uh, not a mistake I'm gonna make in the future. Probably will make that mistake in the future. But now, let's look at the centerpiece of this costume. The torso piece. Now, when I say there are so many ways that you can cosplay as Gambit, I really mean there are so many ways you can cosplay as Gambit. And nothing proves that more than the different torso pieces that you can buy out there. There are some incredible torso pieces, most of them vacuum form, some that people have made in foam. I originally had planned on getting a vacuum form piece, uh, but again, I waited to the last minute and was able to find a seller on Instagram. Uh, who also has an Etsy page, his name is Jared Hale, and I'll put his link to his Instagram in the description and into his Etsy shop 
such a nice guy. I commissioned from him, he does a gambit torso piece. I, I asked him to make it just plain for me, black, so that this way, you know, I could put kind of my own spin on it, do my own paint job. Normally his comes in a purple, but I had wanted to do something that was more like the 90s comic and the 90s cartoon, so I wanted that bright, vibrant, hot pink. And what I wound up with was this. Just look at this freaking thing. This is, without a doubt, the coolest piece that I think I own out of cosplay stuff that I've done. Um, give you an up-close look of it. It originally came uh, plasti-dipped. The interior of it, it's just plain white 4 millimeter foam that he put together and hot glued. I've not yet mastered working with foam, so I didn't really want to do that on this piece. It snaps right with a buckle back here, but I didn't want to do that on this piece. Um, then I added some foam dowels, which he was nice enough to supply me with. The one issue with working with foam is after wearing this and you know having to bend at the convention and do a bunch of other things, it does crease up a little bit. Uh, that's the one issue that I have with it. I used this Krylon Shimmer Metallic Candy Raz. I went through about 10 different paints originally when I was testing this out on another foam piece that I had until I found the right color for Gambit. I used Model Masters, I used Tester's Paints. I probably spent $70 just on paint alone until I found this $4 spray can, which worked wonders for me and gave me the perfect metallic look that I wanted in this suit. So after painting it, I went in with uh, some metallic black acrylic paint and just dusted it in there a little bit to, you know, just look like it's a little grimed up and give it more of a shadowed look. And then I went in with some silver acrylic, brushed that on top. I made the little bib from a pattern that Jared provided me. Normally what he likes to do is, uh, on his, uh, it looks like the zigzag pieces were embossed into it, almost like it was with a wood burner, but I actually wanted to cut mine out of foam and have more of a three-dimensional look to make it look a little more grimy. So there you can see that. And again, I did the silver with a little bit of the copper on top of that. So that is my whole Gambit cosplay, with the exception of the bow staff, which is just some PVC with, you know, just a little finishing on the end. I will eventually make this light up. I have plans to put a button on the inside and work some LEDs through the tip of it to, you know, just make it look you know, a little more badass than just PVC pipe. The funniest part of the convention was, first day I went as Gambit, I walked through the metal detector. A security guard came up to me, took my staff, went like this, and said, is this plastic? Now I understand his concern, but if I just walked through a metal detector with this, and the metal detector did not go off, I'm pretty sure it's plastic. So now, let's take a look at the suit up. There you have it, folks. My completed Gambit costume from New York Comic Con 2018. Once again, this took a year in the making. Thank you so much to Meg, who helped me along the way. Shout out to Jared Hale again, who did this awesome chess piece for me. And to all the great Gambit cosplayers out there. I really took a lot from you guys. And I, I just, I could not be happier with this piece from the jacket to the shin guards and especially to the amazing torso piece that was made by Jared Hale Cosplay. Again, paint job done by me, but Jared, I could not have done this without you. This was an incredible piece and I really, really appreciate your hard work and time. Please go and check him out on Etsy and on Instagram. Both links will be in the description. And thanks again for watching this video. Once again, folks, please like, comment, and subscribe for future videos. If you have any ideas for future cosplays for me as well as content for the channel, please leave a comment below or send me a message on Instagram at cosplay underscore CJ. I really, really appreciate it. And once again, folks, thank you for watching and stay super friends.